First came the data warehouse, which enabled business intelligence across organizations. Then came the data lake, expanding capabilities to include unstructured and high volumes of data, empowering data science. Now the data lake house, combining the best of both worlds, the structure and features of a warehouse on the low cost and convenient storage of a lake. So how does it accomplish this? There's a struggle over the exact definition of a lake house, which we'll get into later, but ultimately it comes down to a data store that includes some key features. There is a separation of storage and compute resources. You have the ability to scale each up and down as needed. For example, you have HDFS for storage and MapReduce or Spark for data processing. Second, it allows for direct access to source files held in a file store. While data can be modeled and transformed for specific needs, the underlying raw source data is available for exploration or yet to be determined needs. Then there is some form of structure and governance ability to maintain data quality and compliance and finally, they handle structured and unstructured data equally, and don't bother users with distinguishing between them. For years, data warehouses and data lakes were distinct because technology just wasn't available to handle both simultaneously. They had different features and different use cases, but a few advancements are allowing for products to bridge the gap. Early data lakes were mostly interacted with using programming languages, most popular being Python and R. While business intelligence focused on query languages, being SQL and its many derivatives. Now query engines are available to use SQL-like queries against unstructured data, such as Databricks SQL, Athena SQL, Polybase, and many others. The engines allow for caching data, statistics and indexing, and CPU vectorization, bringing performance against unstructured data along the lines of SQL data warehouse engines. There's the ability to put a metadata layer on top of data lakes, such as Databricks Delta Lake, yes, more lakes, this allows for ACID-compliant transactions, which is pretty essential to function like a database. They support streaming data, temporal tracking for point-in-time querying, schema enforcement, and data validation. These functions really allow for a data lake to act more like a database than a file share. And last, there's direct integration of data science tools, similar to how they access files, but this is on a more structured and controlled environment. Tools like Pandas, TensorFlow, and DataFrames. This integrates the machine learning and data science world into the platform. So what are the sales points for the lake house? Obviously, the ability to handle structured and unstructured data in an integrated platform is at the top. There's a single system to manage, leading to less administration effort. There's a lot less redundancy. In a normal hybrid system, you move your data into the data lake and then move a subset into a data warehouse and then move it into your data tools. The lake house will simplify the process, reduce redundancy, reduce pipelines, and data movement. And then there's cheap storage, performant queries, governance and schema, and direct access for both BI tools and data science tools. There's really one major con, it's unproven. This isn't the first time high-speed performance on distributed file storage has been promised, and we still haven't seen Hadoop take over the world. Lake houses may do everything promised, but be too much overhead for many organizations, or they may underdeliver. And to highlight the fact that it's unproven, there's real no agreement on what a lake house is. So what product is considered a lake house? It's not exactly clear. Databricks coined the term. Well, others used it first, but really Databricks put the marketing effort in, so it definitely considers itself a lake house. Snowflake has positioned itself as a structured, unstructured, agnostic platform. They may have been the first to use the term lake house, and now that it's caught on, they have references to it being a lake house on their website. Though where Databricks says no relational database is needed, Snowflake takes the opposite approach and consumes the data lake through their database engine. Both Azure and AWS can fit either definition. Both can run analytics directly on a data lake. AWS has S3, Athena, and Glue. And Azure Synapse can query blob storage without a relational database. But both can add in a relational database and Spark engines and query across all of them as well. AWS has started to use the lakehouse term, but Azure hasn't yet. And not to leave out Google BigQuery, which was really the first platform to try to be a lakehouse. And they're pushing further in the lakehouse direction with Big Lake. So if the definition of a lake house is a single platform with the ability to query across structured and unstructured data to accomplish both BI and data science needs, with the end users being indifferent to how the storage layer works, they all really fit the bill. Though the lake house purists at Databricks will probably argue a true lake house has no relational database. It will probably take a few more years for the definition to be decided and for the lake house architecture to prove itself.